May 11, 1987, my daughter Brittany was beat to death by Jose Lopez. He was my boyfriend at the time. Um, when I got to the hospital, she had 4% brain activity left. Um, on May 14th, I held her in my arms when they took off the life support. And I swore to her then that I would make sure he paid. May 16th, we buried her. Brittany was a beautiful 10 pound, one ounce child. Um, in fact, her, her, on her headstone, it says a smile in God's arms. She always smiled, always smiled. Um, I was an 18 year old mother and um, I'm still working on self-forgiveness for leaving her in the hands of my boyfriend for him to watch while I went to work. Uh, he was tried, convicted, uh, got life with the possibility of parole the following year. Um, at that time, in the 80s, life was seven years, a minimum. It was about eight or nine years later that I got a letter from the parole board saying they were considering his release. Well, I didn't want that to happen, so I wrote a letter, basically it's called a victim impact statement, and I went door to door to strangers, told them my whole story, typed up a, a statement protesting his release, and I sent them just gads of signatures with my letter, letters from my whole family, <laughs> letters from um, the prosecutor at the time, the police officer at the time, even a judge wrote a letter. Um, so then I get, the next thing I know, I get a letter from the partner parole boards that says it's been denied. Um, I felt really good. It was several years later, um, it happened again, and I did the same thing, except I got more proactive. I got more signatures, more letters, sent pictures of my family, um, pointing out the fact that she's missing from that picture. Um, and it's denied again. And I've done this four times, a total of four times. You know, the offender has a family too, and they're gonna write letters, and they're gonna have letters from maybe a pastor, from a teacher talking what a good boy he is or a good girl, um, and maybe even a potential employer that says, if you release him, I've got a job for him. But as a victim, if you just inundate, with, inundate them with letters, it's just override anything from the offender's family. They have to look at everything. Everything is put in his file. And whenever a parole board member reviews the file, they're gonna look at everything that was sent in. So, um, I mean, this man's file's this thick, because um, I saw it, and it's, it's from me and my family. And um, it's very important people understand the power they have. I, I had no idea that me, I could control that. and. I do want to thank everybody in this community that has signed my petition because they've made a difference. Last year, they told me, well, basically, you know, he's been in here, this year will be 27 years he's been locked up. And I was awed when they told me the whole reason he's been in there that long is because of me and my efforts alone. Me and my efforts alone. It was just astounding that I had that much power. Uh, but they said that they can't keep him forever and that um, they're going to have to release him. There is a victim dialogue program here um, where you sign up for it. The offender has to agree to it and it's where I get to meet him face to face before he's released. And there's a mediator, I've got one, she's met with him, she's met with me. Um, and we're gearing up for that meeting because the time is coming that he's going to be released. It's not about forgiveness for me. Um, I think it's more about me looking him in the eye, um, telling him how he's affected my life, and that I, I pray that I can walk out of there with some closure for this 26, 27 year fight that I have fought to keep him there. If I hear someone talk about a tragic crime, that, they, that they're a victim, they've lost a loved one, I talk to them about it and, and pray with them sometimes and hug them, always a hug. Um, it's a very hard process and every time you go through what you have to go through to keep them in there, I mean every time I did it, it, it was heart-wrenching. But she was a precious, beautiful child and smiled and laughed and when I think about what she could have accomplished in her life, it, it, it really upsets me and that's another thing that I have pointed out is that in her four months of life, she has touched so many people. I could fill a stadium with the amount of people 
that her four months of life on this earth that she has touched. I mean, the love for my child has overridden every nervous, insecure, everything that I could possess. It, my love for her just overrides it. And I will do whatever I have to do to keep him in there and to let other people know uh, what they need to do.